we left off right here, okay? Um, we're going to pick back, we're going to pick up right here. Now, your paper doesn't look like this, but I have a little half sheet to bring you that does. On the bottom of your paper, right, see half sheet. On the bottom of your paper, just write C half sheet because you're going to do your work on this and then turn it in. And then um, you'll put all of this into the Google Slides that I send you. S E E. C half sheet. And you'll put all of this into the Google Slides when I send. I'm, I know I got to cut. I got to move here on that I see, okay? You'll put all this into the Google Slides when I send it to you. When I'm, because today I'm not going to work all of them. I'm only going to work just a few, and then I'm going to give you this other handout, and we're going to work a few of those, and then you're going to just finish up both and continue practicing doing this factory, okay? So I'm going to do... I'm going to kind of get you started, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. All right? Did everybody get a half sheet? Okay. So, um, your paper, the, red, the original paper, this is at the bottom. But what I wanted is that I wanted more time with us actually working with the models. Because these models are going to carry you. You may not see a lot of these factory models in eighth grade. I don't know how far, how deep it goes into eighth grade with the new standards. But I can tell you without a doubt that these factory models do come back into play in the high school in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. And I can promise you that you will be using them because I, I have tutored high school students who are doing factoring at the high school level and they are using these models. I need you to close your Chromebooks. You're not gonna need them right this minute. And make sure you are listening with your eyes. Okay? So, looking at number 14. All right, so looking at number 14. Well, we've got to just, on this one we're just distributing, all right? So if we want to distribute four times, we're going to distribute this. This is, this is going to be four times X is 4X, and four times 7 is 28, right? Now we're going to come up here and fill in this model. This piece, the um, before distributing, this is going to fill in this box, this box, and this box. This that we just where we factored it, the factor is going to fill in this box and this box. Okay, so we're going to come right here and we're going to put our four here. We can draw parentheses there if we want to, and this is x and this is seven. This is my four x and this is my 28. Okay. Do I have any questions about that? No. Um, I can barely see. So All right, do you need to come sit on the stool? What stool? I'm be on camera. I can move it back some. No. I, mean, I can get you a little bit closer from here. Too. Bring your board with you so you'll have something to write on. Yeah. All right. I can't make the pen on this any bigger, any fatter. If I could, I would. Um, writing with my finger. So that is that any fatter or darker? No. Huh? No. Okay, so writing with my finger is just as good. All right, number 15. All right, we're going to do 15. Okay. So now, we remember when I, we did integers, remember when we did... And we went, and I told you when we did integers, that these integer rules were going to come into play everywhere, okay? It's not just about knowing how to work negative 2 plus 6. 
Okay? you got to know these rules. And the biggest thing that you're going to have to carry with you from this point on is you've got to understand that x minus 2, that is x minus a positive 2. And the positive sign is invisible, right? Mm -hmm. That is the same thing as x plus a negative 2, okay? Now, if you think about the, the plus sign in both of those being invisible, if you think about the plus sign in both of those being invisible, I want to erase that one, and I hope, and I'm going to erase that one. What do you see in both of those? Negative. X minus 2, right? Do you see X minus 2 there? So no matter how you look at it, here or here, it's, X, it's a negative 2, right? Mm -hmm. So that minus sign, is, it is saying that that 2 is negative. Okay? So, and you have to keep that in your brain. Because, like, look, look at it, number 15. Number 15, if we, all right, so let's go ahead and draw our, put it on our model. So this is 7 right here. Our parentheses go here. This is an X right here. <clears throat> and this is a negative 3 right there. The minus sign has to go with it because it's a negative 3. It is a negative 3. Just like this 2 is a negative 2. It's a negative 2 because of this. But we don't have to go through all of those steps to know that. You literally, you literally can take this and lump that sign right there with it and go, that's a negative three. Okay? Okay. All right? So knowing that, then, when I distribute, I get seven times x is seven x. Seven times negative three is a negative 21. So this is 7x minus 21. Okay? Does that make sense? The integers are messing you up, aren't they? But here's the thing. At this point, I'm not going to lie to you. At this point, I can care less if you know why that's a negative. From this day forward... You just need to know that if that minus sign's there, that makes that three negative. So just put them together. Just know that that is a negative three. Okay? Every time you see it from here on out for the rest of your life. But I thought like the head, like you have a variable thing, the first number, the, the beginning was 11, was not 11, but number like the seven is seven, it's not like it's, I thought it was like seven eggs. I'm talking about the sign, baby, not the variable. Never mind. Never mind. Where are you? Never mind. Okay. You sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at number 16. When I put it on my model, I'm going to have a negative two right here and an X and a four right there. Okay. Any questions about that? No for you, but anybody else? No. You don't have to answer me out loud because somebody else might have a question. You're only answering for yourself. So a negative 2 times x is a negative 2x. Negative 2 times a positive 4 is a negative 8. So my, this is negative 2x minus 8. Oh, so you have, oh, okay, I get it now. If you notice, I use the word minus instead of using, instead of saying negative or subtract. Have you ever noticed that? 
Well, notice it because the word minus means subtract, or I mean, it means it can be minus, it can be negative, it can be subtract, whatever you want. But minus is minus is minus, right? Minus is minus. You don't have to worry about is that subtraction, is that a negative? It's minus. If you know that minus is negative, you see what I'm saying? So you'll find you just it's a habit, but I do, I do that because it, it keeps me. I don't have that's a minus two x minus eight. You know sometimes if I might say a negative two x minus eight, but that is a negative eight. Okay. Don't let number twenty one mess you up with that one half sitting out there. Just do the same thing. Distribute one half just like you would if it was a two or a four or a six. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's all I'm gonna do on that page. Does anybody else have any questions about that? Do you have all of these notes down on your page? But I'm not done yet because I'm gonna move. I'm gonna do one from. I'm gonna do several. I'm gonna do several that are. I'm just saying on this page. Is everybody good right here? Okay. Now, let's look at the next page. Flip your paper over. All right. Raise your hand. Get the paper out from yesterday. The paper from yesterday. And if you are absent, raise your hand and I'll bring you one. Pause that camera. Come on. They've already done this piece down here for you, so all you've got to do is fill in the boxes. But I do want to go back and highlight for you, and let's just take a second look. This is what we just did. This is right here. 2 and X and a plus 6. <coughs> now, they're not putting a sign in there, or they didn't, but you can put your plus sign right there. Put your parentheses just to remind yourself that that's what's on the inside of the parentheses and that's where it goes. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 6 is 12. And that, this, and this is right here. Okay? So, <clears throat> Over here on number two, we have 5x plus 20 on the inside. So I'm going to go ahead and write 5x plus 20 right here. <clears throat> and if that five, if this five was not sitting here, let's talk about what we're going to have to do to factor, to factor that. 5x plus 20 is what we get after we do the distributive property, right? Yeah. So we got to undo the distributive property. We got to get that number back on the outside of the parentheses and what was on the inside. We got to undo it. We got to go in reverse. We got to rewind it. Okay? So what am I going to be able to factor out of this 5x and this 20? What is not right? So, 5, y'all are saying factor out of 5, put it out here. 5x divided by 5 is x. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Okay? So, this is x plus 4 right here. Alright? Now, that's all fine and good as long as, because in a minute, I'm going to do something with you on another handout where... It's not always that, that number on the outside of the egg. I mean, you've got to do a little more. You've got to go a little deeper with it, but we'll do that in just a minute. Um, let's do number five. That's all I'm going to do right there. Y'all can finish that. Number five. 5x plus 35. What am I going to factor out of that? Okay. We're not taking the x. We're only taking... All right, listen. Five, five, seven. All right, listen, all right, you're, you're thinking in the right direction. You're thinking in the right direction, but let's talk a minute. When I say factor out, what I mean is what number can I divide evenly 
from both of these. Five. I can, and it's a five. I can't, it's not five X because there's no X with 35. Okay? There's got to be, it's got to be, if you got to take this. We gave, look guys, when we did this, we multiplied everything, we gave everything two, times two, right? Mm -hmm. So when we reverse it, we got to do the same thing, divide two. We didn't multiply by 2x, did we? Okay? So right here, you're saying factor out of 5, right? 5x divided by 5 gives me x. And then Leah said 5 times 7 is 35. Her brain was moving in that direction because she knew that 35 divided by 5 was 7. So now let's get this put on our model. I don't, the giggling has got to stop. This, I, I did it in the wrong place. It goes right here and right here. This, we're going to put here and here. Okay? So, this is 5, 5, and then x plus 7. And this is 5x plus 35. Okay? Everybody have that? All right, so all of that rocks along real good. I want you to look down at now. On number 14, 11 through 14, you don't have these models on your paper, but you can just do the models on the computer when you get them done, okay? But look at number 14. Every problem up to number 14, when you looked at it and you were getting ready to factor, you basically are factoring out the coefficient right here of X. But look at number 14. Can 18 be divided evenly by 4? No. Mm -hmm. no. So 4 is not going to work. What number do 4 and 18 have in common? Levi? 2. 2. There, 2 and 2 is the number is the greatest common factor of 4 and 18. 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2. I'm going to divide out a 2. Okay? I'm going to divide out a 2. Well, if I do that, 4x divided by 2 leaves me what? 2x. And... 18 divided by 2 is 9. Very good. So on your model, you're going to have a 2 here, a 2x here, and your 9 is going to go right there in that box. All right? So while you're getting that, I'm going to come bring you another paper that you're going to work on after you finish. That You're going to do this, get it put into the Google Slides that I send you, the assignment. Then I'm going to bring you something else to work on, but I want us to do a few of those before you get started. Um, Christine, pause that for just a minute while I hand out these papers. Let's jump down real quick and look at number six first. Look at number six. Negative 4x minus 16. Okay? Now, to factor that, we've got to do something. So, what are we doing here? Negative 4x, what do we want to factor out of that? Mm, 4. I mean, we're going to take a negative 4. I was thinking of that. A negative 4. Now, that's going to leave us x right here. But, negative 4 times what is going to give me a negative 16? Four. Uh, 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 four. A negative. Oh, wait, wait. A wait, four. positive four. Listen, oh. a positive four. Remember your Dorito man. Minus, minus, plus. So, this is going to have to be a positive four, right? Mm -hmm. Which means this is going to be plus four right there. 
because when I distribute that negative 4, it makes it a minus 16. Oh. To get this, look now, watch me. It's a minus 16. It is a minus 16. To get that minus 16, I've got to just, when I distribute 4 times x, I'm going to get negative 4x, right? Negative, I mean, negative 4 times x. Negative 4 times a positive 4 is going to give me that minus 16. This is, this is where your integer rules are going, are going to get you. Look at number 7. Eight x minus six. Look at what? Look at number seven. Okay. What can I factor out of eight and six? I mean, yeah, two. Oh, you're kind of uh, it's not an eight, is it? No. No, it's a two. So I'm going to factor out a two right here. Eight divided by that's going to leave me four x right there. And a three. Oh, okay. I know you were because positive two times a negative three is a negative six. Yes. Oh, I get it now. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Here's the thing. And I I, I said it and I said it and I said it. But start looking at that as a negative six. Forget about subtraction. I told you when we did integers that subtraction didn't exist. It doesn't. How, whether you add or subtract isn't determined by that sign. It's determined by whether the signs are alike or different. If the signs are alike, you add. If the signs are different, you subtract. That is a neg That is, you can, you can, you can start looking at that as though it's a negative. It's not. It's a subtraction sign. That's really minus the positive. But minus the positive is really adding a negative, which makes that a negative 6. But you don't have to do all of that in your head. You can just start saying that's a negative 6. Eighth grade needs you to start doing that. I promise. They're going to appreciate the fact that you're coming up there going, okay, that's a negative 6. Okay? So how would you read it? Eight x minus six. I thought you read eight x minus six. Eight x minus six. That's why I said just start saying minus. Because oh. minus is, is minus gets the negative and the subtraction all in one. The word minus lumps negative and subtraction together. So eight x minus six. See? You see what I'm saying? I mean, you see where I'm going? I mean, it's okay. It's okay. But do you see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Sure. It gets it all in one place and you don't have to start. So look at number 16. Negative 4x. <clears throat> you got to do a 2, don't you? My, yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> now, but a negative two or a negative two. We're gonna take a negative two, and that's gonna leave us two x right here. But and negative two times what's gonna give me a minus ten? Five. How did you get a negative two? Because I thought two negatives make five. They didn't. But those two don't have that to do with each other. I know, but how did you get a negative two though? Well, I can't. All right, so let's pull out a two. We can pull out a two. Let's just pull out a two. What's that going to give me right here? A negative two X. And what am I going to get right here? Negative five. 
What is it going to be? Um, no, it wouldn't be a negative. It would be a minus 5. If I factor out a 2, it's going to be negative 2x minus 5. Okay? But if I factor out a negative 2, if I divide out a negative 2, watch what happens. It leaves me a positive 2x right there and plus 5 right there. Yeah, but it's not a difference. <laughs> there is a difference. It is? Um, there is a difference. Okay. So which one would be correct? The bottom. To be perfectly honest with you? I like the bottom. To be perfectly honest with you, it really would depend. At that point, if I just gave you that problem and said factor it, I'd take both of those as the right answer. But what if it's only one answer? You mean one answer, like one answer choice? Yeah. There would be, it would be one or the other. On a multiple choice, if those are both an answer choice, you have two answers, oh. two correct answers. Okay. Because both of those would be, here's the cat, all right, so here's the thing though. Let me show you something. Let me, all right, y'all, y'all asking, I'm going to take you to the next level, okay? This one right here. This one right here is not in its simplest form because I can still factor out a negative. I can still get a negative out of that, can I? I can still take a negative one from here and a negative one from here. So technically this is not its simplest form because you haven't pulled that negative does matter as far as getting it all the way out. Okay. Okay? So, like, to see if it's negative, you got to go with the first number. Yes. To answer your question, yes. If that made no sense to anybody else, don't worry about it. I know what she's thinking, and her the answer to your question is yes. Okay. She's kind of gotten us on another... A little bit higher playing field, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. She's just pushing our thing. But do you understand what I'm saying about factoring that negative out? Yes, I do. Okay. All right, so let me look at this and see if there's any more that I think you might need me to look at, Minnie. All of them. No, 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 no. Say no. All of them. I don't. No. I think we've got it now. Oh, no, I take that back. Number 12. Number 12. I do want to show you number 12. 52 minus 13x. I'm not going to factor this for you, but we're going to talk about the fact that it's not written in good algebra form. Now, more than likely on the back, more than likely on the back, this may be the one. Um, it's giving it to you in the bad form, too. But you don't have to. I don't even care if you don't do the coloring. I just want you to do This was good practice, okay? This. So all I'm worried about is the work. If you want to color it, that's fine, but I'm not concerned about the coloring. But on this one, this can be factored just like that. And I'll go ahead and show you. I mean, I'll, we'll go ahead and do this one. There is... Um, and when you have a number like 13 or 11, when the number's prime, 13, 11, 7, okay, 21. 21's not prime, I'm sorry. Um, 19. 19's prime. Those numbers only have two factors, one and themselves, okay? So the only way to factor that is going to be if, there, if, if, 30, if 52 is divisible by 13. Okay? Because we don't, with factoring, there are no decimals, there are no fractions. You're not pulling decimals and fractions right now. Okay? It's going to be always dividing evenly. And if, you're, if your um, coefficient of x is prime, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 15, 
17, 19. Okay? Those are prime numbers. Those numbers, not 15. Did I say 15? 15 is not prime because it has 3 and 5 and 15 and 1. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 times 1 is 15. If it has more than itself and 1, it's not prime. It's composite. Okay? Prime numbers can only only have two factors, themselves and one. They, can, they ain't got but one number that can be divided into, you know, they have one, one. Okay? 13 is prime. Well, 13, 52 is divisible by 13. Um, 52, I mean, 13 times 4 is 52. Okay? So I can factor a 4 out of this. So if I factor a 4 out and leave it looking just like this, this is going to be... 13 minus X, like that. Okay? No. Where am I stopping? Oh, sorry. I can't do that. <laughs> Hang on. I did that completely wrong. If you watch it on the video, do this over. 52 minus 13X. I'm factoring out a 13. That leaves me a 4 right here minus X. Sorry. We're taking the 13. But I, but that hurts my eyes. That is not algebraically written correctly. If I were doing this as a good, strong algebra student, I'm going to rewrite this as thir negative 13x plus 52. I just, I used the commutative property and rewrote it. Okay, that's a positive 52, a minus 13. X. So negative 13x plus 52 is the same thing. Now my variable's in the front. What's the matter? What's the matter? Why are you doing this? Okay. You okay? So but so when I factor it and take out my negative 13, that leaves me x minus 4. I should have That's fine. That, that's fine. That, there it is. Okay? And again, here's the catch. Here's the catch. You could, and I don't know, I don't know of any off the top of my head, you could see this as the problem and this as the answer choice. So you've got to be able to know that this and this are equivalent expressions. I will leave that up to you. Okay? Any questions? All right. So, you are getting finished with the area and models task and getting that put into the Google slides that I'm going to send you assignment and getting it submitted. And then you're getting the factoring practice done. You can do it on this paper. You can do it on another sheet of paper. All I'm concerned about is the practice. And then the coloring, I'm not. And there you go. So get busy.